this is the review, looking at number 13. The integral from negative 5 to 5 of the whole thing. Okay, so the whole thing, area under the curve, and we just want all that area. So let's see. Um, so let's start adding up these areas. This, this is a semicircle, right? Not the best semicircle you've ever seen in your life with radius 2. This is a triangle. So from negative 2 to 5, that distance is 3. This distance is 3. So base times height over 2 would be 9 halves. Um, I'm going to leave it labeled 9 halves because that's how one on the test is labeled. If you want to label it negative 9 halves to make sure you remember that it's negative, that might make more sense. Uh, but I'm going to leave it labeled 9 halves because there's one on the test where it's labeled positive and you got to know that it's negative. Right, on this side, uh, from 2 to 5 is 3, um, 6 tall. So 18 over 2 is 9. That one will be positive. And then the area of the circle, or the half circle, See, pi r squared over 2 would be 2 pi for the whole area. So if I'm adding up all the pieces, first piece is underneath, so I'm going to go negative 9 halves plus 2 pi plus 9. And sure, I could simplify, whatever, but safe stop. Plus, that matches the picture quite nicely, so I'd leave it like that. Yes. It's negative nine because it's underneath the edge. Correct. Okay. Correct. If it was above, it would be positive. Right. Okay. All right. From negative five to two. All right. So we're stopping at two on this one, so we don't include that that last triangle. Then minus four. Okay. Well, rather than try to do g of x minus four, like shift the whole thing down for, which would really make things look weird. I think instead I want to just write it as, write it this way. That's going to be easier. So from negative 5 to 2 of g of x, that would be negative 9 halves, again, because it's below, plus 2 pi. That gets us to 2, but we're stopping at 2 this time. We're not going to 5, so we're not going to include that last 9. Now, the integral from negative 5 to 2 of 4, well, that seems easy enough that I might be able to figure that one out on my own here. Negative 5 to 2, 4 high. That's just the good old rectangle right there. That's uh, what? 7 times 4. So that area is 28. It's a bit of a tricky one because the first part comes from the provided picture and the second one or the second part comes from a graph and then geometry so that's a good one because that's a confusing one when you first see that at least my first thought was okay that moves the whole function down four well it does but then it really messes things up so instead of doing that Leave the function as is and just create a separate part to solve the second piece. Good question. What else from the uh, review?
Oh, by the way, it says also review 4.1 derivatives. You can say with the circuit worksheet. Tyler? Numero uno. Use the trapezoidal rule to approximate the value of the definite integral with four trapezoids. Draw the picture. 40 minus x squared from 1 to 5. Uh, okay, maybe a table of values before I uh, start graphing. If I plug in 1, I get 39. Plug in 2, get 36. Plug in 3, I get 40 minus 9 is 31. Plug in 4, 40 minus 16 is 24. I plug in 5, 40 minus 25 is 15. So that'll help me graph it, and the chances are I'm going to need those values anyway when I do the, the trapezoid rule. One to five. Let's see here. Do a scale of ten. So one I'm at thirty nine, two we're at thirty six, three we're at thirty one, four we're at twenty four. And five, we're at 15. And we want that area. Using a trapezoid. Using, yeah, four trapezoids. Which is nice, because that divides it up nice and even. So our width is 1. Let's see. Kind of out to the side, reminding myself that the trapezoid is width times the average of the two heights. So, for the first trapezoid, the width is 1. H1 is uh, f of 1, or I could just go ahead and plug in 39 because I've already got it right here. Plus f of 2, which is 36 over 2, so the average height. Second trapezoid, width is 1. Again, when you see the width is 1 and you want to leave it out because you're like, well, playing by 1 doesn't do anything for me, that's fine. I'm keeping, I'm keeping it in there to just show that that's my formula for a trapezoid, width times average height. So those two heights, uh, oh, maybe it would have been a good idea to label them. I don't know. I don't know if that helps you see the heights or if it makes it more confusing, whichever. So 36 and 31. Third trapezoid, 31 and 24. And then last trapezoid. One wide, 24 and 15 are the two heights to use. And hey, safe stop that, right? Like why, why risk put typing that in a calculator and messing something up with parentheses and dividing and numbers and just leave it. I mean, if you want to do it, you can, but you don't need to. So a lot of safe stops on this. Um, 
on this test and on this review. Uh, occasionally, you might want to do them, like number two, left and right Riemann sum. So one of those is going to be an, an overestimate and one's going to be an underestimate. So you, you could type them all in the calculator and make sure that it looks right, like one looks bigger than the, the overestimate was bigger than the underestimate, but your choice. All right, again, on Thursday, we'll take 20 or 30 minutes to answer a few more of those and then test. You guys online, be ready to go on Thursday and Friday. <laughs>